Vascular access in patients with cerebral palsy can be extremely challenging, difficult, and yet these patients oftentimes require medical care requiring intravenous access. They have abnormalities of the upper extremities, contractures that need to be released, but these things also create very significant difficulties in obtaining IV access. Besides these patients, having received many IVs in the past are oftentimes traumatized, and there's a psychological background here that makes it extremely difficult and stressful, even to the clinicians, the patients, as well as to their parents. So here's one technique that I oftentimes use in patients with cerebral palsy, how you can deceive them, how you can distract them and facilitate obtaining an IV access. Let's watch this video. So here we have a young patient with the contractures of the upper extremity. And here what we're going to do actually is apply reverse SBARC technique, which we described in our, one of our previous videos. Many clinicians have used that reverse SBARC technique we described as Dr. Hadzik's techniques in the past, and they left very favorable messages on our YouTube channel. So you may want to look at that video. But here you can see how we methodically go slowly, wrap by round, circle by circle around the arm, edging down to the contractured elbow and as you continue doing this this really distracts the child quite a bit also application of the s mark in addition to pushing the blood from the proximal to the distal upper extremity to facilitate vein placements or intravenous IV access will also cause a certain degree of analgesia because the superficial nerves are a bit squeezed so even the performance of the IV access is a little bit less painful. So we're going to continue applying the S mark and every time you edge in a little bit more distally so stretch, wrap and release, stretch, wrap and release and then start looking for the IV typically on the wrist. So here is a bit challenging because there's not much really immediately showing up in terms of the peripheral veins superficially, but you really have to arm yourself with patience. This is never a situation in which you want to rush because you have one chance, one time to gain their confidence and try. The very first time you fail, the whole preparation, everything that you have planned and prepared may break loose and you're going to lose the patients and their parents perhaps sometimes confidence. So in this situation, we have identified now a couple of peripheral veins. We would prefer to do that on the dorsum on the hand rather, rather than the volar side of the hand. Again, slight tapping over that wrist will cause the local tissues to release inflammatory mediators, which then tend to dilate the superficial veins and makes it a little bit more accessible, a little easier to recognize. Here we can see one peripheral vein, and we're going to choose the one that actually has contributories. If you choose the vein that has that's fairly visible or palpable, but it has distal contributories, these contributory veins distally tend to stabilize the point of vena puncture so that it makes it a lot easier for you to stabilize the vein and insert the vein into that arm. However, if you look at these contractures, you can imagine doing the IV access in these patients is extremely, extremely difficult. And this particular technique that I'm explaining now has saved many aggravations in many different situations. So now we're going to prepare the skin, use a little bit of alcohol or disinfectant, whatever you're using. Make sure that alcohol is dry before you approach the skin with the needle because inserting the needle through the skin that has alcohol on it will be extremely patient. So you really got to make sure that it's dry before you approach that. Now I'm going to even dry that a bit more and continue tapping and here I can see two contributories and one main vein on the dorsum of the hand which we're going to choose for the scannulation. And again, take your time. Rushing to do this is the worst mistake you can actually make. Now these veins are becoming a bit more prominent and in fact we have two, not only one. But we're going to choose the vein that has contributories which we talked about. We're going to use a 24 gauge IV catheter. They are short nice and tiny and here you can clearly see you can once you place the IV inside the vein you can see the flashback in the expansion chamber and insertion of the IV with this technique becomes a lot easier. At this point in time we're going to release the S mark slowly while talking to the patient and you want to make sure that they understand 
that the IV has been already done. And they may not feel much of it because your S mark also helps them conceal the pain. Now we're going to take the needle out, compress to avoid bleeding, connect to the peripheral IV, and voila. There was an IV access in a patient with cerebral palsy in whom the IV access is oftentimes next to impossible. And that was the IV access in patients with cerebral palsy, with the difficult IV access. Again, these patients are very traumatized, so they are their parents. And there's a great amount of pressure every time you perform IV in these patients. Oftentimes, clinicians revert to using high doses of IM ketamine, which is quite ugly, sometimes necessary, but it's not the most previous, the most elegant way of placing IV in these patients. Talking to them and using distracting techniques, such as the reverse S mark, which I described, which also contributes to a certain degree of analgesia as well, is probably the best way that I know of how to place an IV in patients with cerebral palsy. Thank you for watching. If you do like our videos, make sure you subscribe and never miss the new ones. Until next time.